Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Elhamdülillahi Rabbil Alemin. Elhamdülillahi Rabbil Alemin. Elhamdülillah. Elhamdülillah. Adede halkihi rida nefsihi ve zinası arşi ve midadi kelimatihi. Ve muntaha ilmi ve cemi meşa'a ve halaka ve dara'a ve dara'a. Al-Ulgayi şehretir Rahman Rahim. Al-Malik Al-Kudus. Al-Aziz Hakim. وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك لا له الملك له الحمد يحيي ويميت في يده الخير وهو على كل شيء قدير وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وعبيبه وخليله وأرسله بهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على دين كل لو كرهات المشركين الله سبحانه وتعالى Mentions in the Quran, Ya Ayuhaladina Amenu, Quran Fusikum wa Ahlikum Narun. O you who believe, save yourselves and your family from the fire, whose fuel is a nasu wa hijab, is the fuel is men and stone. And really, I don't really want to have like a real long clip I didn't really come prepared for all of that but however just draw your attention to something that's extremely important if you even look at the entire concept of Islam and as time you know progresses in modern day society the longer that we go in this society the, the more that you see that society media and the cultural practices of people are pushing you further and further and further away from caring about your own family. Most people, most children, they grow up desiring to get away from the family, right? You hear things like, you know, uh, blood makes you related, but loyalty <laughs> makes you family and things of that nature. All of these things are anti-family and family is extremely important because even if you look at the life of our prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam his father his mother died when he was a young boy right and so then his uncle took him grandfather took him you know and and so on and so forth until you know he reached that age of being a man most of our in modern day society if our parents were to die while we're young most of family most family it'd be like a it'd, it'd be like a a hardship for your family to step in and to raise you up you know until you reach the the age of, of an adult right but however in the agencies they'll just take you and just place you you know wherever and each child each and every child is born based on their fitra right Meaning they're naturally inclined to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, it's the parents who make them a Yahoo, they make them a Jew, a Christian, a fire worshiper, or just an outright Catholic, right? So then you break up that, that family dynamic, right? With our situation being uh, foundational black Americans who are descendants of captives of war, Right, I'll say that, but also AKA known as the title they say slave. The family dynamic was instru- was was extremely important in order to keep the structure, you know, the way that it was was basically to keep the people powerless. When they stripped them of that identity and they also you know, and part of the identity is your family, is your family structure. That's why in Islam What's more important is to you to be recognized by your father's name, right? And this is why also another concept in Islam, we don't, when we get married, we don't really do the whole last name thing, right? We don't really do the whole last name change because the Europeans, that, that was their family name. That was their tribal name, right? Of the last name. So if you're Johnson, Green, whatever, whatever, you know, your last name is, that was, that was their way to brand you. Right of ownership, but however, during that plantation, not only did they take away your natural language, your Islam, from you, but they also purposely broke up the family structure, and which is something that we still keep going on to this very day. They broke up the family structure, split the men and women up, 
and then they used to have what they called the Bucks, right? And so when you listen to all of the music and see and influenced by those, you know, those videos where men are just out here just slinging wood, you know, and, you know, getting women pregnant here and there, just sleeping with anything, walking very undisciplined, that's very, that's not masculine. That's very, you know, in this society, they consider it to be masculine where men just run around and just sleep with random women. That's actually, that's, that's the opposite, actually. It's actually more animal-like. Matter of fact, animal got more discipline because animals just don't run around just sling wood everywhere, right? <laughs> they at least go out and hunt for it, <laughs> right? But anyway, you know, and, and so what happens is you have all of these children, right? Children that are born out of wedlock. And so as the Prophet Sallallahu said that, you know, the uh, doing zina, it's, it's, not a, it's not a blessed action. And it, it shortens your sustenance. So you take a people where the system is already stacked against them, and then you make them perpetual fornicators and adulterers, and they're slinging and having children all over the place out of wedlock. You'll never ever build a gen, you know, ever build wealth, right? And this is why some people will never reach their potential, right? And they will sort of sit here and have conversation about things of oh, you know, this is generational wealth. We're trying to do this. We're trying to build that. But general generational wealth and legacy that's passed down for us is the pass down is Islam and pass down is deen. Alhamdulillah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alamin wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam radhi Allah ta'ala anhu wa sallam wa tabi'ina wa ulama amalina wa a'im arba'a mushtahideen wa muqalidihim ila yawmiddin wa ba'ad Passing down the generation the legacy of Islam There were many sahabas that were prominent and this is also another problem that stumps our stumps our growth is that we don't have real heroes right we don't have real heroes. Well, we have heroes as Muslims, but we don't really look up to them and mimic them the way that we should. But rather yet, what we do is we deal with those people that's put right in front of them, and many of them are the worst of creation, right? If you look at our, you know, look at our trends, right? You know, when some years ago with the whole uh, concept of dealing with dreadlocks and things of that nature, it was all supposed to be cultural, right? Oh, it's a culture and our practice of culture. But now it's a modern day fashion. You know, your favorite rapper has dreadlocks and they dye them blonde on this side and green over here and purple in the back. And that's how, you know, that's how your child wants to mimic, right? Having holy pants when I was growing up was a sign of poverty. My mother used to take and put the patches on them and iron them on there. Or my grandmother would take them stitch it on there. But patches now is representing like a style, right? where the, the, the pants cost hundreds of dollars, maybe even thousands, right? To wear ripped up clothing, right? So therefore, the concept, your, your, your hero, you're mimicking that individual, whether you want to say it or not, right? But you're mimicking that person. But you had men like Sahabas, like Abu Bakr Siddiq, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, uh, Abdullah ibn Masood, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, right? Where they were asked about Leaving and we have certain beliefs that we have to protect now This doesn't mean that you know you go out because if you have an impoverished mind state Then you'll justify it with your with your your religion Meaning you'll justify it with your deen, right? If you're a bum, you know, you have some people that are natural natural bums They don't have you know a, a, a ounce of hustle in they in their soul right so they'll say, well, it's, it's better for me to sit in the masjid all day. We're not going to condemn you for sitting in the masjid. Allah knows your true reality. But how do you take care of your family? Just as the Prophet ﷺ asked, asked the man that was around all the time, how do you take care of your family? Right? And he said, uh, such and such provides for me. He said, then he's better than you. Right? So you got to have some sort of hustle, but you also have to have a balance and have commitment in the deen. So we can't be all the way to the left. And usually all the way to the left is when your boots hit the ground. When you turn 18, you everything is about money. Some people are even worse. You know, they start before 18. They start at 12 and 13. Y'all got to get this money. I got to get this money. I got to get this money, right? Also, too, <clears throat> you can't view poverty 
as a curse from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And many of us view it that way. If you're a person where you're trying and putting in the effort, but the it just ain't in your favor and in your odds, then that's just what it is. But it doesn't mean that you don't uh, <laughs> attempt to build wealth because you can't build a community, you can't have a family without building, you know, without having some sort of wealth. <clears throat> But sometimes we have our priorities mixed up because what we want what we want our wealth for is to be able to experience a lot of entertainment and eat a lot of unnecessary foods. We want to be able to eat out all the time. We want to be able to, yo, that tastes good. And what's tasting good is destroying our health, right? Many of us are overweight, our health is bad, and it's getting even worse because you're starting to see children at seven years old, overweight, almost the size of an adult at seven, right? 120, 130 pounds, and they're only like four foot ten. These things play a part on, you know, on your heart, you know, heaviness. And this was the thing that happened <coughs> after the Prophet Sallallahu died. This was one of the characteristics that, you know, Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha and Omar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, they were against and they would condemn people that had large stomachs and that ate a lot, right? Eating a lot causes all kinds of, you know, uh, diseases. And then we're not even, you know, taking care of ourselves and looking after ourselves. So therefore, you know, you're killing, you know, you're killing your, killing your legacy, for lack of better words. You're supposed to eat in order to keep the body strong enough so that you can worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that you have energy to pray, so that you have energy to go to work, that you have energy to do your study, to have energy to keep, you know, keep yourself. Not saying that you can't enjoy food, but you have to be conscious of how much food you're actually enjoying. Right. That's too much discipline and too much responsibility. The undisciplined person, they just want to eat and be able to eat and be able to eat and be able to eat. And I've been I've been around long enough to say that the thing is that's hurting current day society it started when they started increasing food stamps. That's the God's honest truth. Because now you can afford to buy extra Doritos. Food stamps in the past, the only thing you could afford to buy was just that. Your, kid, your, your chicken, your necessities. Chicken, beans, rice, right? You used to get government cheese. You used to have to literally line up to receive a block of government cheese, right? However, those things, those things aren't happening no more. Now you can, you kind of like look like regular people when you shop. Everybody used to know how poor you are because you'll come through with that big old book of food stamps. You couldn't just, you know, you had to come with the whole book in order to spend it. They had to take the, take the $10 food stamp bill out in order to pay for your food and hand you back the bill. We used to, as little kids, we used to wait. Till everybody was out the store. We all had food stamps, but for some reason, we all used to wait in the cut for everybody to go out. Like, here you go. Now, now you use a, a EBT card, so it looks like a credit card, right? Everybody has it. Now there's no shame on it because now that's actually accepted as a currency. But if you were standing in line and waiting for that big old block of a block of government cheese and that powdered milk, right? Where you had cereal, where you had to literally make your milk, you had to pour the powder. In a in a cup or a bowl and put water in there, mix it up. That's how you ate cereal, right? Oh, and you had government cereal too. It was wick, right? The only cereal they seemed to give you was kicks with no sugar. And if you ain't had no sugar in the house and you couldn't borrow no sugar from the neighbor down the street, guess what? <laughs> you was eating kicks with no with no cereal and with no sugar, right? But anyway, I digress. These things started to happen. So when people don't have nothing and they're constantly desiring to see what, you know, to get what they see on television and want to be caught up in the loop, then you build a lifestyle on that and your whole life becomes that, right? You'll dedicate your whole life to that. And that's why many people, they'll choose a uh, crime as a method. Any Muslim who chooses crime as a method to take care of themselves, they're still Muslim, no less, right? But you you are like real weak in your iman and your undisciplined because these things happen. You know you you're going to be tested, and Allah tells you that in the Quran that He's going to test you. Sometimes by means of your wealth, sometimes by means of your life, right? You're going to be tested by these things. But you have to keep focus and stay on track and understand that family is everything. 
And by saving your family from the fire, which we opened up with in the first chutbah, saving yourself, that requires you to educate yourself. Because the most impoverished person that will remain in that state is the one with the lack of education. The one who, who constantly will be manipulated is the one who doesn't learn, right? And as, as Muslims, we should have a better study ethic than even the Kufar, because you're studying two times as hard. So on the Kufar, they're just studying the stuff in school in order so they can make money. Well, you have to do that as well, but you have to study your deen so that you keep your iman sound and get to Jannah. Not only just study, but also practice. We should have the better of the ethic. So passing down that legacy, as people talk about passing down that generational wealth or removing generational curses, right? It is amazing that we're talking about this in that time, but one of the first curses that we don't remove <laughs> is boyfriend and girlfriend. Our children have boyfriend and girlfriends. But then we advocate and say, hey, you know, we got to remove gener generational curses. The second thing is the ignorance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But we pass that right down when you don't educate your children, when you don't educate yourself and, and learn the reality of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you don't read the Quran, right? That's passing down that generational curse, right? The way you eat, that's a generational curse. When you pass it down, you eat haram food, you overeating, eating everything that, that moves, you have no discipline. That's a generational curse. And I can just keep going on and keep going on because I done lived through four generations of it, four, you know, four decades of it, right? So the thing is, is that Islam is supposed to improve you and make you better, but because we love the society and the culture that we're in, and we're caught in fads, that's why everybody's talking about generational curses, generational wealth, because it's a fad. There's no sincerity behind it. It's no sincerity. If you want to remove a thing, then you'll do it. We have the we have the recipe. We have the map. We have the road map, but we don't follow it. And so when you don't follow it, you'll continue to get exactly what it is. If you don't follow Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will test you with the same thing that he tests the disbelievers with, and he'll reward you with the same thing that the disbelievers get rewarded with, and that is fire if you die upon that kufr. Subhanahu wa bihamdi wa shalom wa la ilaha illa anta wa staffu wa tu lay. Ya kama salam.